Hi, this is Marcus from Super Simple Health, and today I would like to investigate the health benefits and side effects of spinach. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to be taking a look at various articles to see if I can get a balanced view. You see, it's too easy to fall into the trap of just relying on one website for your information, so I like to check several websites to make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay, so first up, it's Medical News Today, which has an article called Health Benefits and Nutritional Value of Spinach. So if we just scroll down here, take a look at the nutrition information. Here we can see it's got some calcium, iron, magnesium, potassium, folate, and a lot of vitamin A. There's also some vitamin K, fiber, phosphorus, and thiamine. Okay, so what about the benefits? Let's take a look down here. So, diabetes management, cancer prevention, asthma prevention, lowering blood pressure, bone health, promotes digestive regularity, and healthy skin and hair. But what about the risks? Well, let's take a look down here. So it seems that if you're on blood thinners, you might want to avoid too much spinach because the vitamin K can interfere with it. Also, consuming too much potassium is not good for people with kidney problems. Okay, so how reliable is the information in this article? Well, if you scroll down, you've got a section here called References. And this contains links to seven different articles, all of which are on PubMed Central. So, it seems like it's a pretty reliable source of information. But let's look at some other websites anyway, just to see what they say. Style Craze has an article called 10 Serious Side Effects of Spinach. These are Poor Mineral Absorption, Stomach Disorders, Diarrhea, Anemia, Kidney Stones, Gout, Teeth Coarseness, Allergic Reactions, Toxic Reactions, and Changes in anticoagulation, whatever that is. I'm sure you can uh, find out about that if you read a bit more into this. The only problem is, there are no references listed on this article, so we don't know how reliable this information actually is. So, anyway, let's look at another website. Okay, so let's look at WebMD. So, as usual, they are rather cautious. They don't list anything that it has proven evidence for, they just have a list of things that there is insufficient evidence for. Stomach and intestinal complaints, fatigue, stimulating growth in children, promoting recovery from illness, and other conditions. But what about the side effects? Let's have a look. They say that spinach is likely safe for most people when used as a food, However, the safety of larger medicinal amounts is unknown. Then they've got a list of special precautions and warnings here. For example, you shouldn't give it to infants under four months old. It could lower your blood sugar a bit too much, so diabetics should be careful. It can also cause hard crystals to form in your kidneys. Again, this goes back to what it said on the first website about it not being good for people with kidney problems. As for references, well, there's absolutely loads of them, but the only problem is there's no web links anywhere here, so it's not easy to check any of them out. Okay, moving on. Livestrong.com has an article on the side effects of spinach. Again, this mentions the issue of spinach and kidney health, so this does seem to be a real possible issue. This seems to be due to the high amount of oxalates contained in spinach, which binds to calcium and can cause kidney stones. There is also mention of the effects of spinach on digestion due to the fibre in it, but I don't think this is much of a concern because most people don't eat enough fibre. They mention the fact that it reduces blood sugar, so that could be an issue for some people. They also say it might not be good for people who are allergic to salicylates, but if that's you, then there's a whole bunch of foods you shouldn't eat, not just spinach. Anyway, they say that spinach is usually fine when eaten in moderation. As for references, there is a section called References and Resources, which has a lot of links to a variety of different websites. 
Anyway, on to the next one. What do the BBC have to say on the matter? Their Good Food website has an article on the health benefits of spinach. They list the nutritional highlights, saying that it's rich in iron. They also say it's rich in chlorophyll and carotenoids, which has anti-inflammatory and anti-cancerous properties and is important for eye health, helping to prevent macular degeneration and cataracts. But further down the article, they say that spinach has good levels of iron, but not quite as much as originally believed, as rumour has it researchers placed the decimal point in the wrong place. Also, the type of iron contained in spinach is the type that our bodies find difficult to absorb. And in their section on safety, we are back to the issue of kidney stones again, due to the high oxalate levels. Spinach is also high in oxalic acid, which can prevent absorption of some nutrients such as iron and calcium. In terms of the reliability of this information, there are some links to other articles, two of which are on the NHS website. OK, so what can we conclude from all this information? Well, it seems that spinach is nutritious and well worth including as part of a balanced diet, but you shouldn't have too much of it. But the great thing is, you don't even need to chomp your way through the leaves. You can have spinach as part of a powdered juice blend containing other healthy vegetables too. In fact, there's a particular green juice product I drink myself and highly recommend. So check out the link in the description to find out more. Until next time, I wish you the very best of health.